Hey everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have the, the cutest little project that I've worked on for the last, uh, I think, four or five, six days. And it, it's not your typical project. When I, recently, when I was um, at the doctor's, my doctor was making small talk with me, and um, she asked me what I like to do in my spare time. And I said, well, I knit, and I like to make books. She goes, oh, make books? And I said, yep, big ones, small ones, you know, different kind of books. And she goes, oh, you have got to see this TikTok video. I was like, I don't do TikTok. She goes, you really got to watch this video. She said, do you read? And I said, no, not really. Um, I barely read directions for things, <laughs> forget a book. That's like too much of a commitment. So she said, well, you, you really, you got to see this TikTok video. I was like, okay, okay, I'll watch the TikTok video. She said, this is what you're going to see in the TikTok video. This is for people who like to read a lot. They take, uh, they go on to um, Canva, which is a um, design app that you can do either for free or you can do the Pro, which is about $120 if I remember correctly. I think it was like a $119 for I think it's a year and I decided to start with the free because I knew I was not going to fork over $120 for this project. It's just crazy. So I watched the video and I was smitten. I was like, oh my word, I love this idea. It doesn't really apply to me, but I still love this idea. So this is what you do. I'm, I'm not going to show you the whole design part because I will link the videos I watch down below in the description box so that you can watch the videos the same ones that I watched that I just thought were the funniest thing ever and they were they were cute and I thought it was rather creative so let's see let me get the supplies and I'll show you what to do okay I, I'm undecided whether or not to um, show you how to do this on the computer. I think you're better off watching the videos. Now, I have to say that this was not the... Um, I'm not a computer tech savvy sort of person, so somebody has to lead me around by the nose to get me to do something. <laughs> so um, I watched the video either uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 times before I finally understood what they were doing. But if you're a person who catches on very quickly, this will be a breeze for you. I, on the other hand, was not that person. Okay, so I'm going to skip to the creative part. The first part is you have to create a file in the Canva program, save it to your computer, and print it off. That's the extremely simplified way to put it. So you go to Canva, you create a file, and you extract images from Goodreads or some other place where you can copy the image the front of a book. When you create it, you create a front and a back to the book of books you'd like to read. Ones you haven't read yet, ones you want to read. So here is a sheet that I did of books that I would like to read. All right, so there are, uh, let's see, they're, Sue, they're all Sue Grafton books. They're the alphabet books. If I remember correctly, I could not find the Y, and there was no Z because she passed away before that book could be written, and I think her daughter put it on the Internet, there will be no Z because the mother passed away, and that was the end of the series. I could not find a Y. I did look, but I couldn't find it. All right, so after you create the image that you need, this is what you do. Now, you can do this on a paper cutter, or you can do it with a pair of scissors. You can size these to be rather large, which I did once already. I did not understand the sizes. Let me just get through that real quick. And I made books that were just, oh, they were huge. They were way too big. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, where would they be? I don't know what I did with them. Hmm. Okay, later in the video, I will um, find the books. Anyway, so you cut out. This is the front, the back 
uh, this is the front, the spine, the back, and I picked green. Canva will suggest colors to you, and the cool thing is, is when you do this, Canva will take colors from the image that you are saving, and they will suggest colors for you, which I thought was really interesting. Never seen that before. All right, so the next part is to, now you can do this lots of different ways. I just found this to be the easiest way. I took my mouse pad <laughs> and I took a Martha Stewart stylus tool. And when you do this, you can distinctly see there are two lines here for the spine. So I just went down and pressed lightly down the line to make sure my little piece of paper will bend. You can see there's the, well, maybe you can't. Yeah, if I tilt it, yeah, there you go. You can see the two lines. All right, so then you fold along your crease. I'm filming this at 5.30 in the morning, so the shadows and stuff are really wicked. All right, so you fold it as best you can. Oh, my neighbor's leaving for work an hour early. Um, so then you get this little paper book right here. It's empty, like this. The next part is a little tricky. I have not been able to refine the way I do it, although I do it a way that I don't know if a, another bookmaker would do it. Take this and you measure, let's see, just like you would if you made a regular book, you have to measure for your signatures. Yes, there are signatures in this little book. So I took my ruler when I did this, and it's about three quarters of an inch, a little over three quarters of an inch. I might do seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, I might do seven eighths of an inch times two is what, an inch and a half? Okay, so there we got an inch and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut my paper so that the width is an inch and a half. But first, I need to know the height. So I measure this, and if I remember correctly, I do one and a quarter inches. Now, I this is a scrap piece of paper. I can't find any that are right on my desk that are big enough to do this, but let me, well, I could use this. This'll, uh, this'll do. All right, let me get the paper cutter. Okay. We have a paper cutter, and I'm going to use the. I, I didn't want to use paper that I already. I didn't want to use new paper. Okay, that's not close enough. There we go. I'm going to cut all the text off of it. All right, so take a strip of leftover paper. Don't destroy good white paper or good paper. Use scraps, which is what I tried to do. Most of it was scraps. Okay, so the uh, height to my book is one and a quarter. And then I figure, I think last time, I, let me do one and seven eighths. Okay, I just cut, and I would do usually more than one of these at a time. I would stack the paper up so that when I fold them, all the, sig the pieces of paper and one signature are folded together, which is better when you do this. So I'm going to see how this fits. A yeah, little too short. So one and a quarter is too short for this one. Let's see, what's this? We have a little bit left over. A little overhang here, which I'm, I'm okay with, but I don't have enough in the bottom. So my width, my height is not enough, if you can see. Let's see. Let's do it this way. It's so much easier. All right. As you can see, there is a little teeny bit of black up here. And when you set it down, there's more. There's a teeny bit. Now, because I'm not, because this is strictly decorative, what I will do is I will shave a little off of here instead of having to recut all of these. So I will take this and shave hair off. Let's see if that's enough. Perfect. Okay. See, it was 
you know, just a wisp. All right, so there's that. Now you got to cut. Let me see if I can get another inch and a half. Oh, this is the one I used. So let me just shave a teeny hair off of this now. So this was one and a fourth. So basically we need one and, what is it, seven sixteenths or something to that effect. Shave that off. Oh, well, that didn't do a very good job. All right, anyway, so let's try this. Let's do a little under two inches. And I usually have four or five pieces of paper stacked up because that will make the signature. Instead of cutting these, you know, one sheet at a time. All right, so here's one, two, three. I usually try to do five pieces of paper at once. So here is three, here are three. And I have some set to the side from an earlier project. So I'm gonna set the and, the, and the measurements are not the same, nowhere near it. So I'm gonna take this, and I think maybe this is cards, this one's paper. I have cardstock that's cut to small size. All right, so there's this one. Now you're gonna need some kind of a clamp or a clip. I find the sewing clips work great. All right, so let's get that together because I don't want it to come apart. This is cardstock, this is paper. Since this is cut larger, we'll put the small one inside. Um, what else have I got? Oh, I don't have it. Okay, so let's try one, two. This is sulfite paper left over from our project. So this is used. Two, three, four. I think maybe four as, as much as this cutter can handle for a thicker paper. Let's do not one and a quarter. I mean, make sure the ends are lined up and just do it this way. I don't know if this is going to work on this thick paper. Oh, well, that was a surprise. Okay, and now I'm going to cut just a shave under two inches. I would have used my giant paper cutter, except for this is kind of fussy cutting. And I think the paper cutter would have done great on the length, but it's just such a small amount. I'm just not gonna fool with it. Then I take the bone folder and kind of mash it down because this is thicker paper than regular computer paper. So you may not need as much of this as in the signature as you would if you use regular computer paper. Okay, so I have these that are, this one's paper, this one's cardstock. We'll see how this goes. Like I said, I use scraps, so there's a variety of different papers in there. Honestly, it makes no difference other than you just have to figure out how much you need in the signature according to the thickness of your scrap paper. All right, so I'm gonna tap these down. I'm gonna put them inside here and see if I like it. I do not because, again, this is still too tall. I have a little bit of the book. Don't you know, in the middle of trying to film something, my um, SIM card filled up. And so then I had to wait 15 minutes for it to um, go from the camera to the card. And then I had to delete everything so I could put the card back in. Anyway, I know it's antiquated, but it works for me, except for in the middle of a video. All right, so I think where I was is that I put the paper in, folded it up, and then I put a clip on it, and there's a reason why there's a clip. Now, I've tried this more ways than one, but still haven't decided which way is the best. All right, so I don't want all this white paper sticking out of here, so I take Oh, the cat's unhappy, the door's closed. <laughs> He's out there yowling. All right, so uh, let's see. I just line it up and just kind of cut away at it because, whoops, because I don't need this paper to hang out my book. I would like for it to look nice. 
here we go. There's one side, and then I shift the clip to the bottom because the ruler is not going to fit well. And sometimes when you do the clip, it shifts the book, and now there's white paper showing here. All right, so I'm going to put this at the top, mash down, and just cut away at it until you get it all away. And it's it's you know it's basically a sliver of paper, but. I want it to look as real as possible, and I don't like that it shift, shifted. All right, so there's the little tiny book. This is, I think if I remember, 0 0.09 by 1.3. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, so then I hold it in my hand. I open it up to where the fold is, and I'm using... And it doesn't matter what kind of glue I use because these are not going to last forever anyway. Um, I use PVA on the spine, the fold where the spine is, and then I take the PVA and I put it on rather thick down into the folds where the signatures are. Oops, it slipped. All right, so then I push it together as best I can. Kind of sop up the glue with my fingers. This is kind of a messy project at times. And then I let this, I put the clip back on. I set it down on the board. And the nice thing is, is because they're so small, the clip, you can just, whoop, you can set the clip down. I say that as this one's not going to work. There we go. Well, phooey. There you go. So then you just set that up, and I let it dry for a couple of hours because it is rather glueish, <laughs> overwrought with glue. And there's your little miniature book. Now, there's nothing on the inside. You're never going to open this book because the next step is going to prevent that. Oh, wait, let me put, leave this back on. I need this. So the next step, now I've seen couple videos where people use Mod Podge, but I live in the south and humidity is a killer. So if I put a whole bunch of these into a container, they're all going to stick together because of the humidity here in the south. Mod Podge does not fare well. So I'm using DecoArt DecoPage. And then you just dab it. I did in the beginning, the, the others that I made, I did glue all the pages together. And I thought, oh, what a waste of glue and time. I did see someone who did it like this. I, w I think I'm going to link her video if I can remember where I found it. I think it was on YouTube. And she had watched the same TikTok video that I watched. So she referred to the lady in the TikTok video that I talked about seeing. All right, I'm just going to brush it. And I'm not going to be crazy with it. And if you have a gap in the pages, it's okay. The glue is going to sink right in, and it's going to keep the pages from opening, and the book will never open, and I'll show you what the results are. So you just brush it up and down here. Kind of give it a little, a little dab, and make sure you don't get too crazy because you're going to get glue on the front of your book. You really don't want that on there. It's... I... This is my regular glue brush, so uh, it was a little too large. It's overkill for this project, but it's what I had on hand. Okay, let me put this in some water so I don't ruin my ugly brush. All right, so then you leave this, and I made, I don't know, 60 of these yesterday, and you mass make them because it's a whole lot simpler. And then I just set it up on the board, maybe. There you go, and then it dries. Okay, so... I'm going to show you, I said I mentioned that I had um, made some others that were way too large, so I'm going to show you these. This is A, B, <laughs> C, D. I see why people make these little. If you're never going to use them, unless you're going to put them in a library, like on, on a bookshelf or something, and decorate the spines, make it all fancy so that you can see this from this side. Um, this was a total waste of paper. So let me show you the scale difference. <laughs> when I saw how big these were, 
I was like, they said miniature books. This, I don't think, is what we qualify as miniature. This, yes. So I went back and I resized all the books that I had made before, or uh, these, and the other 24 of the images I had, I had to resize them. It's a little tricky, but I, these were just, you know, these are crazy. This is just way too stinking big. But what I did was I added to my collection of little books that I'm saving to put into my lamp. If you had seen a video, you guys have watched the video before, I've been making little Coptic books. So, uh, little, let's see what else is in here. There's more stuff besides Coptic. Oh, here we go. Three whole pamphlet stitch, that kind of book. And I'm going to add these to my collection because I'm not going to waste these. It, you know, that's a lot of paper. So that's those. So let me explain to you why people are doing this. There are a lot of avid readers out there who will read random books. They don't care what the book is. They just want to read. So this is how they do it. They make all these little books. See, I told you I made a lot of them. <laughs> My two favorite authors. Um... And they put them into a jar, and they they um, pull them out. And it's, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? What they do is they go, I feel like reading a book. They shake up the jar, and they go, okay, I'm going to read this book next. And that's what that's the whole point of this is pulling a book out of a jar so you can read the next book out of you know, random amount of books that you put in there. I just put them in this little jar because I thought it was cute. Um, the worst books you can use for this are the books that go in sequential order, like these two books, uh, authors here. Sue Grafton does the ABCs. You do them out of order, you kind of lose the flow of the book. And also with Patricia Cornwell, she does murder mysteries. She's an F... Uh, it's, um, Shoot, I can't remember the girl's name. Anyway, the the uh, main character in this is an FBI agent. And these kind of go in order for her. So you can't read very many of these out of order. So the two that I used for my examples were bad examples to use for pick a, picking a random, random book out. Like if you read um, murder mysteries where they're not connected to each other, that's great. You can just pull it out. It's not a series. You can just pull it out and read it. So I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to waste these because, you know, I'm not going to pull these out because I know these go in alphabetical order and these go in a time order for Patricia Cornwall books. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them to this because these are my lamp books that are going in the base of that clear lamp. I got a nice little collection going. So every time I make a new book, I'm going to add it to my collection here. And this is going to go inside my lamp whenever I get enough of these. I keep thinking this might be enough, but I look at the lamp and I'm like, uh, no, probably four times this amount needs to go in there. Um, so if you're going to do this, you need a before and after jar to be read, already read. I think that's very cool. You just take it from one jar to the other so you can keep track of what you've read. And you think if you think you've read something already, you can just go back here and pull it out and say, oh, yeah, I already read that book. So that is the project that you will uh, that I'm going to put the links for on how to do, you know, all this computer work stuff here. Um, it was a lot of fun, very repetitious. If you're a person who likes uh, repetition, this will be your project <laughs> because it is very repetitious. So far I've made close to 200 of these little books. Yeah, I know. It's just ridiculous. 200? Wait. Uh, about 150. Yeah, about 150. So go check out the, the videos that I post down below so you can understand better of how to make the books this way on, um, on Canva. There might be some other design program that you can use. I learned on Canva because that's what the woman used that I watched her YouTube video and she shows you the screen and how she picks it. For the most part, she did a good job 
on showing you how to get from point A to point B. There were a couple of times where, I, where she clicked on something and I'm like, well, where was that? So I had to watch the video about 10 or 15 times. I would stop, I would watch it stop, do one part. It took me a while to understand how to cut and paste off of Goodreads and import it into Canva, which really is not that hard, but I'm just slow. <laughs> And then um, after that, you have to size your images to what size you want. And then you need to come up with some kind of a connector, a spine for them, a color that will connect it. And you move things forward and backwards in the image. Like when you, when you start out, you just have these two right here. But you need something to connect them together because if you don't, then you just have two, the front and the back, and then nothing. It won't make a book. But then you import a square, or move a square, and then you have to move it around these two things. Then you have to do, you have to bring the book cover forward, and then you have to do this one forward, so that the only color you see from that little square that you made, or rectangle you made, is the little line in between, which creates the spine. I know it sounds odd, but it does work, and it works really well. Um, and then after that, you just save the file, and you print it off, and then you start cutting and making your little books. This, to me, this part took me forever because I was learning it, but after I made so many books, this was very simple. Um, and you can cut an image off of anything, as long as you can they let you copy the image from something, then you can start your own collection of books. Now, all these came from Goodreads, which I don't use, but that was what was suggested. And Goodreads did not have every single book, like the uh, Patricia Cornwell series. Not all her books are on Goodreads, and some of them are blacked out. I don't know if it's because they're out of um, print, although... You would think there would be a digital copy in this age of computers and stuff. You'd think there'd be a digital copy. Or maybe they're not allowed to sell that specific one or she hasn't given them rights to sell it. I don't know. But some of them I could not find. Now, I didn't do all of Patricia Cornwell's books, but I did as many as I could find on Goodreads. And there were a lot of them. She's a very prolific author. So um, that's my project. I just thought I would share it with you guys because I just thought it was such a cute little project. This would make a great gift to give to an avid reader. The only problem is, is if you don't know the genres that they like to read, it's going to be hard for you to fill up this because you don't know what they've read. You don't know what they want to read. So this might be something for you to do for yourself or just to have a little um, jar on a shelf that has miniature books that you make. That might be as good as it gets. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.